Warning. The following episode contains scenes of real talk that may offend you, convict you, and maybe even convert you. Viewer discretion is advised. I don't know that they hide behind religion because I said this on this show once before. Jesus would be the grand marshal at the pride parade. I don't mean about gay people. I mean it. Wow. What did that lady just say? (laughs) That is crazy. Those women hate God and they reject his word. And they tell people what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. Welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me. It comes directly from God's word. And let me be very clear up front. No, Jesus would never be the grand marshal of a pride parade. What's wrong with you people? Now, that is not my opinion. That is clearly what scripture says. And we're going to look at that really quick because I want to make sure you see what God would actually do. If Jesus was in that scenario, what would he do? Well, let's look at it. Luke 4 verse 18. It says that Jesus would share the gospel with them. That's what he came to do, to preach the good news. Second, Mark chapter 1 verses 14 and 15. He would call people to repent and believe the gospel that he just shared. And thirdly, John 8, 11, he would tell people to go and sin no more, to leave their wicked, evil lifestyle behind and follow him. Please understand that. Jesus is not going to celebrate sin. That is not what Jesus do. He is a holy and righteous God that cannot handle sin. See, the originator of the LGBTQ agenda is Satan himself. This is a demonic movement. Let me be very, very clear. And their goal is to normalize sin, to normalize this lifestyle, to normalize homosexuality. And they're getting it done. And I want to share with you some of the ways they are. You have to see this, you guys, because it is permeating and infiltrating and dominating our world. You can't turn anywhere without seeing some sort of homosexuality, some sort of LGBTQ agenda. And right now, I'll start with number one, Disney. Watch this. Back in March, Disney made headlines for publicly opposing a Florida law that bans public school lessons, including sexual orientation and gender identity in kindergarten through third grade. Since then, top executives have signaled a greater shift towards telling stories that explore those topics. Whistleblowers from Disney sent these videos to conservative activist Chris Rufo, citing concern about the company's direction. I don't have to be afraid to like, let's have these two characters kiss, let's in the background, this, like I was just wherever I could, just basically adding queerness. And now we know, you know, as my son texted me this morning, <laughs> you know, Gen Z is 30 to 40% queerer than the other generation's mom. So Disney better get with it. Burke went on to express support for increasing LGBTQ characters in entertainment content with the goal of 50% of all regular and recurring roles across the Disney universe coming from quote, underrepresented groups. So let's just get along. Let's be inclusive. I mean, let's get with the times. I mean, that's what it is. It's okay if, you know, one girl is kissing another girl in this little cartoon, in this little animated movie. No, that is, that's sick. That is not normal. That's not how God made things. That's how culture's making things. That's how Satan wants us to think that we should do things, but that is not how God set it up. Please understand that this is not biblical. And please show me anywhere in scripture where Jesus was inclusive. He was not. He even said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. That is exclusive, not inclusive. But it gets worse. Here's an influential leader, the Pope. Watch this. Reported comments by the uh, Pope could signal a major shift for the Catholic Church and its views on homosexuality. A survivor of clerical sexual abuse, Juan Carlos Cruz, says that when he told the Pope he was gay, the Pope responded, and I'm quoting now, God made you like this, God loves you like this. So you just saw that. The Pope meets with a gay person who had been abused when he was younger, and he says, it's okay, God loves you as you're gay. God made you this way. What? Nowhere in scripture does it say that. Nowhere. You can't find one verse that backs that up. But sadly, the Pope thinks he is above God's word. And over a billion with a B, people follow the Pope. They idolize the Pope. They worship the Pope. They hang on his every word. 
and he is leading people astray. He's leading them straight to hell. So we've seen Disney, we've seen an influential leader being the Pope, now we see the local churches. Watch this. After 33 years in ministry, he is now officially ordained and says he's the first openly gay pastor in the Presbyterian Church in Greater Columbus. It's okay to be who you are, and it's to be inclusive, and it's to be loving, and it's to be missional. Grace says it was encouragement from a spiritual mentor who helped him make peace and share his sexual identity with the faith community. Bishop Kelly said, if you're going to be a peacemaker, you got to be at peace. While some continue to ask, can you be gay and a man of faith? Yes. I don't, I don't, even, I don't even know how to respond to that. Faith is what brought me out of the closet. Grace says he is building his congregation on love above all else. It's not about this political and politics and things. It's like, have you actually read the Bible? So this pastor says that you can be a gay Christian. <laughs> Wrong, no, absolutely incorrect. First Corinthians chapter six, verses nine through 11 is abundantly clear. Paul lists out all these lifestyles and all these sins, and it says, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven if you were one of these, an adulterer, a murderer, fornicator, drunkard, homosexual. And then in verse seven, he says, but such were some of you, and you were washed, you were redeemed by God. You cannot be gay and Christian. You are either one or the other. We talked about that in 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 through 10. Also, he says, again, they always want to use inclusive. No, Jesus was nowhere inclusive. The Bible does not teach that at all. And thirdly, did you see what he said there? He said that because of his faith, his faith is what made him come out. What? No. Our faith, the faith that is given to us by Jesus, Hebrews 12 verses 1 and 2 says, okay, that faith causes us to run to the Lord, to leave our sin, to follow Christ. No, this man is deceived and is deceiving his 100-member congregation. This is nonsense. Now, finally, it's invading our schools. Now we're getting really personal. For those of you who have kids, it's invading our schools. The LGBTQ agenda is to target our kids. Now, why would they do that? I mean, you see it all the time, picture of drag queens reading you know, their, their queer stories to kids in libraries and all these little kids, and they think it's so wonderful, and oh, look at that, it's so awesome. No, this is sick, okay? They do that because kids are the most vulnerable. They're the most easy prone to manipulation, and they're easily persuaded. Okay, and that is sad and shame on those parents. They're allowing this nonsense. Watch this. Christian parents prayed and protested before the State Board of Education against a law requiring public school students to learn about LGBTQ history and cultural contributions. The controversial new curriculum kicks in this coming September across New Jersey. We don't want our children forced to be taught things that go against what we believe as Christians. The teachings of uh, Jesus Christ are that we are to uphold what the biblical principles say about one man being married to one woman. Though I have no animosity and no hostility towards anybody who should practice this lifestyle, I feel that it is not fair or right or just for the curriculum to be taught in such a way to label people with my religious convictions as bigots because we are not bigots. This is going to have a detrimental effect on kids. How? How? because what they're doing is they're introducing an alternate lifestyle. Now, once you, the way this is worded, um, it's opening Pandora's box. You have this now put within the state curriculum for students to not simply learn about, but to adopt as their own. So you see, it's now trying to get into our curriculum. They're trying to normalize this, that every, hey, LGBTQ being transgender or being homosexual or lesbian or whatever you want to call it, is normal. No, it is not. It is not normal. But the 1% of the world that is homosexual, they're trying to make everyone else feel that this is. That's why it is a satanic agenda. Now, if you notice in all those things, Disney, the Pope, uh, the pastor, and the media, and the school curriculum, what's missing? What do they, in the LGBTQ agenda, what are they leaving out? God's word. 
They don't want to talk about what God has to say about homosexuality. They reject it. That's why they can't stand the truth. If you try to share the truth with somebody, they're going to call you a bigot. They're going to call hate speech. They're going to say you're unloving. No, I'm sorry. That's wrong. Let's see what God's word does have to say. It's a sin. Okay. Pride. James 4 verse 6 says that God opposes pride. Also, 1 John 2 16 says that God opposes the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Leviticus 18 22 says, do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman. There's also Leviticus 20 verse 13, Romans 1 verses 24 through 28. We already talked about 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 through 11 and 1 Timothy 1 verses 8 through 10, which says practicing homosexuality is contrary to sound doctrine. It goes against God's word. And please understand this. My pastor said this a long time ago, and I want you to hear this. If God says something one time in his word, we should pay attention. But if he says it multiple times, we should really pay attention. Please understand that God is clear in his word about homosexuality. See, whether you think that you are born gay or not, that is not the point because we are all born sinners. Psalms is very, very clear about that. The fact is homosexuality has been proven already in this episode. It is a sin. And the only cure for it is Jesus Christ. It's the gospel. It's repenting of your sin and turning to Christ. That's the only cure, okay? When you put your faith in Christ, when you repent of your sin, God gives you a new heart, Ezekiel 36, verses 25 through 26. He washes you clean. He comes in and he is your God. He fills you with his Holy Spirit. And watch this. He gives you new affections that are in line with his word, not with the culture. 